So I'm going to I'm gonna kick this off with a question for you. And I'm going to kick it off with an answer. What happened at the Ubisoft Forward? <laughs> that is a great question. Things happened, my friend. Uh, so I'm assuming you didn't watch this. Uh, the bits and pieces. Okay, I, like I, I kind of flipped through it to see if it was anything more than... Or anything exciting. Yeah. Uh, did you watch anything on the Outlaws? Star Wars Outlaws? No. Okay. So I they, they first off they spent a lot of time on Star Wars Outlaws. I figured. I figured as well because it's coming out like what in August I think. Yeah, it's coming out in There's August. Better games coming out in August. Yeah, Black Knight Wukong. Shout out. Uh, they spent a lot of time on it, and I don't know. I mean, it looked fine. Like it didn't. I, I was. I didn't get super pumped. I didn't get super excited. I'm like, yeah. Well, I'm also just not a massive Star Wars fan. I mean, well, it's okay. The problem with like I knew it was going to be a lot on Outlaws. Yeah. The problem with that for me is this is the same thing as when Starfield was coming out, mm -hmm. and we it, we would get 30 minutes of the showcase talking about Starfield and showing off little aspects of it. It's like, I don't care. Right. It's like, you can show me all of that, or you can just, you know, show me a couple cool trailers, a little gameplay clip here and there, right? and just make, make the shorter form version of that. 30 minute showcase that you're going to do for the game mm -hmm. to make it interesting. Right. It, it's like not to bring it up every chance I get the opportunity to, <clears throat> but I mean, we kind of do that around here. Black myth. Yeah. Black myth. We get one, two minute trailer. If it was that long in August every year and think of how hyped we were before we ever saw gameplay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I mean, uh, so Steve popped in chat. He says outlaws looks good. So honestly, like, with Outlaws, I feel like if you're a Star Wars fan, you're probably going to really dig what they're doing. I, I'm just going to keep it real. I guess that's why it's just, it just looks okay to me, is yeah. I've never throughout my entire life have ever been a diehard Star Wars fan. I, I like Star Wars, but I'm just not a diehard fan. I will Hot say, take for me, I guess. I will say, it's like, I've enjoyed Star Wars, but also I've, I've had no interest in Outlaws since it was announced. But it's also the same thing with, like, my question on, I think it was... Uh, Tuesday when we did the show when I was asking about the Indiana Jones showcase. Yeah, it's the same thing. Where it's like, I'm not seeing any of the reception from it because I'm not the target. I'm audience. not the target audience, so I'm not seeing the the responses from right. those people. For me, I'm just not. I'm. It's not a game I'm excited for. Right. So I kind of, I, I, I take the small peaks they show me in the larger showcases mm -hmm. and that, and that's all I'm really looking at. Yeah. Uh, I did see when it comes to Outlaws, apparently uh, it'll take about 30 hours to complete. So I saw that, and I'm just like, well, you know, if it ever goes on sale, that's kind of in my realm of I'll, I'm willing to do that. You know, I, I don't want a, an Assassin's Creed Valhalla over here. That doesn't sound fun to me. But 30 hours? I can do 30 hours. I'm fine with that. So, I mean, Outlaws, like, I, look, just taking my personal opinion of Star Wars out of it, the game looked good. It looked impressive. They're cooking up something good. If you're a Star Wars fan, you're going to be excited. But if you're like me and you, or we're just like, Star Wars is cool. Yeah, it's whatever. Then we don't give a shit. Yeah. It, it's a sale game for me. Like, and like Steve said in chat, he's a Star Wars fan. Yeah. So he's excited. That's fair. He'd be excited for that. This is like, for Star Wars fans, this is your Indiana Jones game. Yeah. If this your Hogwarts is, this is, legacy. I was about to say, this is your Hogwarts yeah. legacy. <laughs> it's like, but outside of that, if... This is one of those ones where I think if you take the Star Wars out of it, it it'd be less exciting. Exactly. But that's that's the appeal of it. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, a lot of time on Assassin's Creed Shadows, of course. That's kind of their big release. Uh, I think we kind of touched on this on the last episode because I know it was in both showcases. But I mean, it just looks like Ghost of Shima Assassin's Creed, which I know you weren't a fan. I'm of, not actually. a fan. You're of You're not it. a fan of that. Uh, the internet is. The internet loves it. I don't. I understand why. The, like, I understand why you would want to do something like that because it's like, especially for Assassin's Creed, having two, like, the the two characters, two ways to play the game, kind of. The problem is why go about it for a game that's not Ghost of Tsushima's when presumably they're gonna do something, they're gonna do another game or something similar to that. Why are we putting that in other? It's like, why are we trying to shoehorn that into other franchises and that still? It's because people want more Ghost of Tsushima. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know. It just feels like, for me personally, it just feels like 
putting that into Assassin's Creed is just like, hey, we know you guys liked this other game. We're going to we're going to try to do something like that, but I can only imagine it's not going to be done as well. I can only assume so because uh hey, great example came out in March. I still really want to play the game. Apparently it sold really well for the company, but it was like reviewed as a pretty okay game. Rise of the Ronin it heavily inspired off Ghost of Shima and it just didn't do it as well. You know what I mean? It, it's it's we're in a really weird time of gaming where we're seeing all these different games come out that are inspired by other games. It was like the the breath of the wild effect that you we've talked about, and that right now we're seeing the Overwatch effect where we have a bunch of hero shooters coming out, and now we have the Ghost of Shima effect where we have a bunch of games that look like Ghost of Shima coming out. It's a it's a we're in a weird time of gaming. <laughs> The pro- I don't know. Again, my whole thing with the Ghost of Tsushima thing is that, that was all built into the story of like how you played your character. Right. And I'm assuming that... I, I, granted, I didn't really see it. Is the Assassin's Creed one, is it just two different characters? Yeah, it'll be two Ver- different That characters. varying how you... Their, yeah. their skill sets are different. Yep. That's the part that I don't like about it. I like the fact that the Ghost of Tsushima... I love that game. And I love that as, how you played your character determined how like your skills and everything worked Mm -hmm. uh and that's i don't know yeah it seems like a a less interesting way to do it right granted you can have games have always had games of multiple characters have always had like this character is good at this and this character is good at this right but the portrayal of it in that style to get the effect that they've got from it Mm -hmm. where it's like yeah remember that remember how much you like this thing look here right exactly i don't like that yeah, great. It is probably going to be a people are going to love it. Yeah, I I see I see your point. I do, uh, and it's a game that I I've definitely got a lot of interest. In. I've said for years, you know, like off shows and stuff that hey, if we ever go finally go to Japan, that's going to be the one thing that could potentially draw me back into this franchise that I've used to love so much and have just fallen off of immensely. Probably the hardest I've fallen off a of franchise in my life. Um, but I mean, I, I think the gameplay does look pretty sick. There, I do wish it wasn't just some so much of a Ghost of Shima clone in some capacities. You know what I mean? It's mostly when you're playing as one of the characters. I feel yeah. like within the other, but you know, I, I mean, I do get it. You know, I understand. Yeah. I understand the approach because of the the vibe that you're going for, the characters that you're portraying, especially one of them being a real life, you know, a real life figure, uh, Yasuke. Uh, you know, I get it. You know, I, I understand, you know, but so I, I, I see your yeah. point. I also recognize I'm in the vast minority. Yeah, of this stance. I mean, you definitely are like the Internet. Most people will are excited are, for this. Pumped. I look at it and I'm like, that's not what I would have wanted. But, but it's he, like I'm also looking at it like what would bring me back into it. And this is not bringing me back into Assassin's Creed. That's fair. You know, the one thing that uh, that. I, I really like about the approach that they've gone for and everything is just the fact that it has generated excitement. Because I feel like this is the first time we've really... I've seen this level of excitement of Assassin's Creed in a long time. Like, Mirage was a lukewarm excitement, right? Like, everyone was just like, okay, cool, we're back to the basics. This should be a fun little adventure. Nothing too long. Can manage this in a, in a week or two. Awesome. Valhalla, there was excitement, but, every, but there was also still those well, diehard Assassin's Creed fans where it's like, oh, man, another one of these massive well, games. Valhalla was also the opposite effect of this, where it had no excitement going into it. And it was the week of release that everyone was excited about it. Yeah, then yeah. they played it and they went, holy shit. Right. Uh, which that one, I mean, granted, didn't didn't feel at all like an Assassin's Creed no. game uh, no. playing it. But <laughs> None of it, those felt really like do. A, it felt like a fantastic game to play. Odyssey and Valhalla both don't really feel like Assassin's Creed games. Origins kind of does to a very small extent. Um, but Odyssey and Valhalla does not. <laughs> So, yeah. like, I don't know. It's kind of nice to see there's legitimate excitement around Assassin's yeah. Creed because it's a really cool franchise. Awesome franchise. I, 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 I don't dive into it as much as I used to, but it is a cool... I can acknowledge from a distance that franchise is cool. So I'm, I'm glad to at least see the excitement for it because people are pumped. Yeah. People are ready. Yeah. But I think it also comes back to what you said earlier where it's like people just want more Ghost of Steam. People are ready for Ghost too. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's what it is. That's the thing. Is like, like you said, the excitement around it, I mean... I'm glad to see excitement for some of these franchises, especially like, even though I'm not the biggest Assassin's Creed fan, right? It's also you you have to acknowledge that there hasn't been excitement in the franchise for ten years, yeah, or more. 
Uh, so to see people actually be excited about it, it's like, okay, well, they didn't make what's going to, what's, what's making me excited, but at least everyone else is excited. <laughs> well, yeah, like what Steve said in chat, people have been waiting for this from Assassin's Creed. People have been waiting for Assassin's Creed to go to Japan. I think we've all been waiting for that since like it started, you know what I mean? And we started kind of doing some different, you know, different areas of the world and stuff like that. People have been waiting for this. Uh, so he brings up a great point there. He also says, I need an Assassin's Creed 3 remaster. My God, I think that's a thing. I think Assassin's Creed 3 uh, does, in fact, have a remaster. Uh, may want to look into that, but I, I think that's already a thing. Um, not a remake, of course, but I do think there's a remaster for that. But anyway, Assassin's Creed Shadows uh, does look good. Uh, will I pick it up day one? Probably not, but will I pick it up on a sale? Absolutely. Uh, here was the biggest shocker of the show. They acknowledged Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake. The, it's like to me that game is in the same realm as like perfect dark where it's like holy shit it exists because it's been like such developmental hell for so long with like oh i mean this game is in so much developmental hell they're probably not going to touch warrior within or two thrones which is heartbreaking i love warrior within and they the fact they acknowledged it like i know it wasn't anything except a quick little trailer with like you know like a lamp whatever and that was it it's like Holy shit, they acknowledged its existence and gave it a release date of 2026, which I'm not buying it's coming out. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think it's going to come out in 2026. You know, I will say, because even though I didn't even though I didn't really like watch much of this one, of the showcase in general, the fact that you mentioned that, and it's like, yeah, I, I, I had seen, a, like, I'd seen the mention of the name, but I hadn't dug into it because I, I, I know that is like I knew that was gonna get mentioned because you're, you like that's one you're excited to talk about when you do hear anything about it. If it's not coming till 2026, potentially, it's, potentially. it's like why? Don't mention it, right? I think it's, they just a, th want it's a thing that I've I've been harping on for years at this point. Yeah, if a game is more then the current calendar year or it won't be released by the next calendar year i don't want to hear about it right because then i'm going to be hearing about that game for the next 4 years while you push the dates i think it was really one of those things that they just wanted to confirm to people that it is not canceled because there was even some rumors that it was going to get canceled yeah but do the do the microsoft thing during their showcases where they display a lot of their indie titles yeah, yeah and throw over like there. from their smaller yeah. developers do a well ubisoft can't do that they don't make they don't have that much stuff going on <laughs> uh but it's like do a little montage of like backstage stuff or like like Put it in with a montage of scenes that you've already shown us from some of the other games you're talking about. And right, just like right. throw a screenshot or something up in the middle of it. Just If you just want to acknowledge it. Yeah. I don't want to hear 2026. Right. I don't want to hear 2026. I was, I almost, I almost got mad at X, at the Xbox showcase for as much 2025 as they yeah. had. I agree. I agree. That was really the only knock about that show. Yeah. A lot, but they, they made up for it. We started getting some 2024s. Yeah. Well, that's like when I said it. It's like I, I, I had to go back and, and look at it Yeah. At, when I went back to watch it the second time where I was like, okay, i got to pay attention to this because if there's if there's more than I think there is, I'm going to be mad. Yeah. No, I get that. I get that. No, I am with you, though, on the date thing. I mean, I'm glad to see it didn't get canceled, but it's like, damn, that's so long, man, because I, I don't even think it's going to come out. It, it, I mean, it sucks because, like, this is a game that I'm, like, this is a day one for me yeah. for, for a very personal nostalgic reason, you know, date, you know, dating back to, you know, with my mom, yeah. very personal game for me. So this is a day one, but it's like, is it coming out in 2026? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I will say the rest of the Ubisoft forward overall top to bottom, pretty mid. We can probably run through the rest of it. Uh, did get a look at the first season of X defiant. Uh, so shout out to that. Uh, Skull and Bones getting a second season. <laughs> the fact it got a first. The fact it's a game. Oh man! Do people play that? I I I guess so. Like I, I haven't seen any reports. Like you know, there's one player like Babylon's Fall. Remember that shit show? I haven't seen anything like that. So I guess people are playing it. I don't know, man. 
Uh, they need to put this thing on Game Pass. <laughs> they really do. If they put it on Game Pass, put I'll the, play it. Put this thing on Game Pass. I'll, I'll play I'll, it. I'll go, be I'll, a, I'll, 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 go, I'll go sail around with you. Uh, Prince of Persia Lost Crown DLC, so shout out to that. Uh, Rogue Prince of Persia update, which I didn't even know that one was a thing, so that's my bad. Uh, and then I thought this was funny. I couldn't believe this. The story expansion for <laughs> Avatar. But here's the thing that I thought was so funny. Because, like, as someone that owns Avatar, which, by the way, is a three-disc game, so that's fantastic. Um, it is a mid-ass game. But it is one of the most beautiful games I have ever played. So I thought it was so damn funny that when they went to go show this, they were literally showing streamer reactions of coming into the world to try to drive to the audience watching this. We have a beautiful game here. And trying to mask everything else about it. It's it's a beautiful game, bro. Isn't it just like... Far Cry Avatar? Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100, it's like it's like the joke that you said, oh, that's a cool skin for... <laughs> that's a cool Far Cry skin for whatever. It's a, it's a beautiful game, dude. Like, like, if this is a game that you can get for super cheap one day, pick that thing up because it is legitimately such a gorgeous game once you get into the world and everything. It's so beautiful. But, it, God, the game itself feels... It's boring as shit. Like it's like it's beautiful to see. It's kind of like you know you're just doing like a, you know it's kind of like one of those things where you're at a theme park, right? And there's a certain part of the park that you're not into, but you go through the theme park because it's a cool section of the park. It's like, well, I'm glad I got to see that, but I'm probably not going to come through here again. It's kind of like that, you yeah. know. It's literally it's, the same vibe. <laughs> it's like it's like when you like when you you go to the theme park and you're like, I don't, I don't care about it, but I'm here. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. So, yeah, story expansion for Avatar. Again, I just thought it was funny that they led off with it, showing streamer reactions of coming out into the world and seeing how beautiful it looked. So, shout out to that. God uh, damn it. All that reminds me of is how many games after Breath of the Wild have the climbing <laughs> out of the cave, yep. looking over the, the cliff the top, effect. and it's like... <sighs> The thing is, it's annoying how how often games <laughs> it used changed to, gaming. It's annoying how often it's used now. But I'll be damned if it's not effective every time you play a game that it has is. it. Every it every is. game does it, and it's like every time you're still like, "Man, that looks great." Yeah, it never fails, man. Breath of the Wild changed the gaming industry permanently. <laughs> Uh, all right, next we have the final season of the Crew Motorfest. Rest in peace. That game's coming to a close in sometime near future. Uh, and then a new announcement uh, for apparently, I, I, I don't follow this series at all, but apparently this, like, where they're going with this one is apparently a huge fan requested one. So I guess shout out to that. Is it is the game just called, is it pronounced Anno? I An- assume so. Okay, Anno uh, 117 Pax Romana. So I, I, don't, I know of the franchise, Never played yep. it. No interest. Apparently, this is a highly requested. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is highly requested for, by the fans. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. so as far as I know, like I know what the font of the title looks yeah, like yeah. when I see it, but I don't know what the game actually is. It's just like a real time strategy. You know, it's like a sieve or something like that. That's all I know. So I don't know. Shout out to shout out to fans for that though. Overall, Ubisoft forward. It was a Ubisoft forward. That's. I mean, it's. That's it. That's it. It's the thing of like I didn't watch it and I could have told you what was in it. Oh yeah, <laughs> because yeah. Ubisoft is Ubisoft has done the same showcase. Yep, for the past four years, basically. 